If you were given an option between having a happy day and an unhappy one, is there any doubt regarding what you would choose? Happiness, of course, is the universal common desire of all of us. Taking advantage of this, in recent times, a huge industry has been created around the idea of happiness. Even restaurants offer happy hours, which have discounted rates and hotels have happy days. Learning the art of happiness has many advantages and just one of them is its physical benefits. It has been scientifically established that happier people have healthier hearts. They are less susceptible to cardiac afflictions. Even more importantly, with relevance to modern times, happier people have better immunity responses. A scientist called Stone and his associates conducted this experiment with over a hundred people. They would be called week after week and a psychological test would be taken to evaluate their level of happiness on that day on a scale of 1 to 10. They would also be given a capsule containing the cold virus, rhinovirus. And after a little while, their saliva would be checked for the antibody response. A higher antibody level indicates a more robust immunity system. It was discovered that on days when people felt happier, their immunity system was far stronger compared to days when they were miserable. So looking at the various health advantages of happiness leads us to the question that do happier people lead longer lives? Factually, they do. This was discovered in a very interesting study related to the School Sisters of Notre Dame, which is a world-famous monastery for nuns. Inmates of this monastery who had been born before the year 1914 had been asked to maintain autobiographical journals on a regular basis. Half a century later, researchers got hold of these and they analyzed them to understand how happy a particular nun had been in her youth. Interestingly, it was discovered that the happiest quartile of nuns, 90% of them, had lived beyond the age of 85. Whereas amongst the least happy quartile, only 34% had crossed the age of 85, thereby correlating your happiness level with your life expectancy. But that gives rise to another question. Supposing I choose to become a happier person now, will it increase my life expectancy? Actually, it will. At Harvard, the longest serving professor, Ellen Langer, of their psychology department, conducted this experiment in the year 1979. She invited 75-year-old males for a free retreat. The condition was that they would bring minimum personal items and absolutely no books, journals, periodicals. At the retreat center, the environment was created to replicate a time 20 years ago, the year 1959. There were periodicals, magazines talking about Eisenhower. 
These retreat participants were also asked to discuss matters related to when they were 55 years, 20 years ago. And their bodily parameters were checked before the retreat and after the retreat. It was discovered that on all parameters of aging, they had improved. Their hand grip was stronger, their eyesight was better, their short-term cognitive memory had been enhanced. They were even looking younger. This was tested by third-party people showing them pictures of before and after. The mere thought in their mind of being 55 year olds had made them healthier. So, another reason to be a happier person, it will enhance your ability to handle stress. Learn about this from my latest book, The Art and Science of Happiness. Uncertainty and stressful situations are an inevitable part of life. Pleasure and sorrow enter our lives at regular intervals like the summer and winter seasons. Hence, the ability to deal with stressful situations is a key component to a good life. And a happy disposition empowers us to better cope with all kinds of challenges. How is that? Well, managing stress is an art. Happy individuals master it by simply changing their perception of the event. Rather than viewing it as a calamity, they choose to see the inherent opportunity in it for growth. All these examples establish the impact of mind over matter. Factually, our psychology can affect our physiology. This was corroborated at the Baylor Medical Center in Texas, where research was conducted on rheumatoid arthritis patients with stiff knee joints. One of the treatments for this is arthroscopic surgery, in which three incisions are made, laparoscopic instruments are inserted and the knee observed from close. Then one of three options is chosen. Either the debris is scraped off or the knee is cleaned with a jet of water or else nothing is done and the cuts are sutured. Now in the case of patients where the third option had been chosen, where the doctors chose to do nothing, the patients were not informed and they believed that they had actually been treated the regular way. The consequence was over the following weeks, for the next one year or so, the condition of their knee just kept improving because they felt they were getting healthier. And this has led to the placebo effect. The placebo effect is a medically validated effect where a patient is given a blank pill but is informed that he or she is receiving a wonder drug. Faith in the doctor or the care of the medical attendant and the validity of the drug convinces the patient of receiving the right treatment. And medical science says the placebo works 55 to 60% of the actual medicine. And the best validation of the placebo effect is the reverse placebo. What is that? Well, this study was conducted on school students in Japan. 
they were informed of the allergic reactions of the human body to poison ivy. Then, poison ivy paste was rubbed on their upper arm. And naturally, a majority of them had the allergic reactions, which was to be expected, except in this case, the paste was not of poison ivy, but an ordinary shrub. So what caused the reaction was their belief that they were getting a poison. Later on, poison ivy was actually rubbed on them and they were informed it was an ordinary paste and only 15% of them got the reactions. So this is the robust validation of the attitude upon our health. Now, why does the placebo work? It is not some kind of a magical mumbo jumbo. It is based upon the expectancy theory. And what is that? We will discuss it in the next episode.